guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Slither.io tutorial series. This is a bonus conclusion episode that I hope you guys are going to enjoy. Um, we're going to go over the features through gameplay and through reviewing our code, as well as talking about many of the main learnings that we had this series and how you guys can apply them. Um, so firstly, let's take a look at our game and go through some gameplay. So as you can see, we have a main menu, um, really smooth animations and flicker animation you can see we have a length we have a pulsing animation for the um, food both floating and stationary as well as the clones of the snake body uh, as you just saw we have a boundary we have a mouse follower that creates for a smooth dragging effect and we have both mouse down and mouse up effects as well if i go and i touch a boundary we have a game restart animation as well. That's super cool. So these are the main six sprites. In our main sprite, if I clean up, we can kind of go through our code here. Um, and I don't imagine it'll take too long here. But So here we're just creating our clones. Um, here, this is the real chunk of the scrolling uh, effect of our game and changing player X and player Y according to a direction using some trigonometry. Uh, we're managing our mouse down effects here. Um, and then here we are managing the clones, both in size and in position. Uh, we're doing some brightness pulsing effects here, um, and then changing the location of the snake head, uh, and finally managing any game over logic here. In our stationary food, which will look surprisingly similar to our sprite three or moving food, not, not surprisingly, I should say, they're pretty similar. Here, we are spawning our foods, um, repopulating them if it ever gets below 100. We are then going there to the positions um, and then deleting clone when we collide with certain things. We've created our own block here with a parameter or an input called added length. Um, in here, we have done uh, clone X, clone Y, and then added some animations with size and ghost. Stationary food or, uh, was Sprite 2. This is Sprite 3, which is the moving food. If I clean up here, you can see that we have this uh, block, which is very similar. Um, here we're spawning once again, deleting and managing collisions uh, with this new block. And this is the only real difference, which is that we're using some trigonometry again to translate a direction into a change in X and Y. Um, turning that direction randomly and then adding some random movement with that entire script. Uh, and then here's some more animations with both size uh, and color. All right, in this we have created the boundary effect. Um, or I shouldn't call it an effect. This is just the boundary basically using a neat trick of creating a costume that's super, super tiny. We have uh, been able to increase the size of this to 300. Here we have created a mouse follower um, that, as you can see in my stage, creates a cool uh, following effect. And then finally, this is what we did in the last few episodes, um, again using the cosine function, which is uh, trigonometry, so you guys got a lot of that in this series, to set our size and point in the correct direction, uh, a hover effect, and then flickers um, for starting the menu and starting the game. And then finally, managing our length shown. Uh, in our backdrops, I should say, we're managing cam, cam X and cam Y, which is a re really useful uh, uh, kind of idea that you can apply to your games because it allows for scrolling that is smooth by using this simple script. Um, and yeah, that was basically it. I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this series. Uh, super excited that I was able to teach you guys um, and able to kind of walk you through how I built this game. Um, and yeah. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys soon, hopefully, with another series, and peace out.